Thank you. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. And Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Let's stand as we sing, To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gates that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes what won them from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he has done please be seated welcome to our service today and a special welcome if you're visiting with us and a welcome to those who are joining us online my name's chris and i'll be leading us through the service today and it's a service of prayer praise and the proclamation of God's word. And today, Michael will be concluding our Easter series and we'll be looking at how Jesus opened the minds of the disciples so that they could understand everything that the scriptures said about him. This week in my Bible readings, I've been going through Philippians. What a great joy that is. And the readings have challenged me always to keep my focus on Jesus and everything he has done for us. In chapter 3, Paul lists all the natural reasons why, as a proud Jew, he should be in good standing before God. But then he says, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And he goes on to say, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. So as we think about all that God has done for us, let's say this prayer of thanksgiving together. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for life and health and safety, for freedom to work, leisure to rest, 
and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Saviour Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer set down for today. Gracious Father, who in your great mercy made glad the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such awareness of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks, Michael. This is, this is fascinating. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. Well, friends, a very warm welcome to St. John's this morning. It's great to have you here, whether you are new or visiting, a very warm welcome. Uh, my name's Michael, and I'm one of the ministers here at St. John's, uh, and it's great to be able to welcome you here. If you are new or visiting, or if you want to get uh, into contact with the church, or if you want to hear about what's happening in the weekly e-news, uh, you can fill out one of these cards and jot down your details, and one of the team will be in contact throughout the week. And we would love to get to know you. We would love to hear how you're going. If you are joining online, you can also fill out this form online at stjohnswishart.com.au. And we would love to hear from you, especially if you're joining online. Uh, here at St. John's, we celebrate birthdays. So we have one birthday today. Happy birthday, Barry, for today. Let's give him a hand. Uh, how about we pray now for Barry? Heavenly Father, we give you so much thanks for Barry. We thank you for his faith. We thank you for the way that you've been at work in and through him over many years. And Heavenly Father, we pray that in this uh, new year for Barry, that you'll be able to help him to rejoice in your goodness and love for him. Heavenly Father, with his ongoing treatment, we pray that you would uh, continue to heal him and give, continue to give all the doctors uh, wisdom into his treatment. Um, and that you would be filling Barry with your joy and your peace and the hope that we have because of the resurrection. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, coming up this week, uh, today after the church service, we're going to be having a prayer meeting. So grab a cup of tea uh, and have a chat and then we'll come back here um, after the service. Just keep an ear out for when we're going to get that going. Uh, our Easter series finishes today. Of course, we're still going to be celebrating Easter throughout the whole year and the hope of the resurrection of Jesus. So uh, if you missed out on any of the series, uh, you're able to catch up online at stjohnswishart.com.au and listen to the talks there and also download the transcript if that's uh, helpful for you. And then next week, we're going to be starting a new series looking at promises you can count on. Uh, we're going to be bouncing through the four Gospels over these next eight or so weeks, uh, looking at the promises that Jesus gives us. Sometimes, uh, as Christians, people can claim way too much. People can claim that we must have healing if we have enough faith. People may claim other things such as that. Uh, but sometimes we can underclaim things. We can think that we're just kind of holding on or slogging along until Jesus returns and there's no hope for this world right now. Well, actually, that's not true either. Uh, but Jesus gives us some promises that we can hold on to that can sustain us through this life, that can help us serve him in this life. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at those. Uh, small groups are going to be looking at those as well. If you're not part of a, a home group, uh, come and have a chat to me afterwards because home groups are a great way to go deeper into God's word and to grow deeper in fellowship with one another. Um, so come and have a chat to me afterwards. Uh, put in your diary May the 5th on the Sunday uh, and you're able to come along to that. We're going to be having a church lunch. There'll be a sign-up sheet uh, from next week. Uh, if you can bring sandwiches or a fruit platter, that would be really helpful, uh, a light lunch uh, after church. Our parish walk is coming up in May as well. The details of that are in the new sheet for this month. And then Alpha begins tomorrow. 
Alpha is an amazing opportunity for people to come and ask the big questions about faith and about life. So tomorrow at noon, we're going to be starting our first session in Alpha. So if you haven't yet invited someone, countdown's on, but it is not too late to invite someone along. Uh, please flick us a message if you are coming or if you're bringing someone along so that we have enough food because there is a free lunch as well, which is a great deal, I think, and you get to hear about Jesus. So that's a great uh, way to, to invite people to share the hope of Jesus. Uh, please be praying for the course because, of course, hearts can't be opened or people can't have that assurance without uh, Jesus, without the Holy Spirit being at work in people's lives. So please be fervent in prayer over these next six weeks uh, that these people, that these guests who come along uh, would really take hold of Jesus over that course. Uh, note from Ross Lacey. Thanks to everybody who replied to the bins out uh, request email. Uh, Glenn Mason won the race, so thanks. <laughs> thanks, Glenn, for that. Uh, here at St John's, we don't take up an, an offering through the plate, but if you wish to give, uh, we would love for you to consider partnering with us financially, and you can do so either by online through direct debit, and those uh, bank details are on the website and are on the news sheet, or by still uh, giving in, uh, in the offertory box up the back. Uh, we've just shifted it slightly so it's out of sight from the, from the main entrance, so if you could put uh, the money in there, that would be greatly appreciated as we seek to resource ministry and mission together. And I think that is it for all the news. Thanks, Chris. I'll just pray before uh, Janelle comes to bring us today's reading. Thank you, Father, for making yourself known to us and showing the way of salvation through faith in your Son. We ask you now to teach and encourage us through your word so that we may be ready to serve you for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, Janelle. Our reading today comes from Luke 24, verses 36 to 53. It can be found on page 885 in the Pew Bible. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do you doubt and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for for joy and were marvelling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer on, and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continual, 
and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand as we declare what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, if you could keep a Bible open at Luke 24, that would be helpful, or a Bible device, as we go through this passage together. That way, if you tune out, feel free to read on. It's better than me talking anyway. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us, and we pray that as we open it today, that you would shape us, fashion us, remould us, rebuke us, teach us, encourage us, spur us on, comfort us, all for the glory of your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. On far too many occasions, I tend to get a bit distracted by YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a site where there are many different videos. It draws you in with an interesting video, but then it hooks you in with even more interesting videos, and then it has to keep you so it makes more money. And so the algorithm starts to show even more absurd videos and exciting videos. And you know that you've hit the bottom of the barrel when you start to hit the conspiracy theory videos. And of course, I'm a bit curious, so you you have to have a bit of a look. So according to these theorists, uh, John Lennon from the Beatles is still well and alive somewhere in the world, as is Elvis Presley. Uh, Probably my favorite one is that the former Prime Minister Harold Holt didn't really drown off the coast, but popped in a Japanese submarine because he was a spy. Uh, It's all just absurd. It's all just rumors. What they lack is any thread of credibility or any shred of evidence. And they only have a couple of theorists whose stories don't match up. No witnesses. But what would be even just as absurd or even more absurd would be the claim that a man who was killed on the the cross by Romans rose again three days later. I mean, it's even more absurd than John and Elvis, because what Christians claim isn't that Jesus escaped death in a bait and switch, not that Jesus survived death, but that he really died, but then really rose again. No other conspiracy theories claim a resurrection because it's completely out of the picture, isn't it? However, what separates the resurrection from any other theory is that it isn't a theory at all. It's a fact. There is evidence to it. There is eyewitness testimonies to it. It's the real deal. Jesus really did rise from the dead. And so to stop this news from just becoming a conspiracy theory, Jesus has given his disciples and us a task. And that task is to be witnesses to him and witnesses to the resurrection. So to set the scene in this passage that we've looked at today, the disciples from last week who were on the road to Emmaus have come back to Jerusalem. We're probably still on Easter Sunday. 
the other disciples were telling them that Jesus has risen, that Jesus has appeared to Peter. Uh, the other two were telling them about their encounter with Jesus along the road to Emmaus. And suddenly in this squabble and in this hum of activity, Jesus appears. Look with me at Luke 24, 36. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. They're rejoicing about Jesus, and now Jesus stands among them, but they still need some convincing. Their reaction isn't immediate belief, but being quite frightened. They didn't quite believe what was they were seeing. So then, was Jesus just a ghost? Was Jesus a figment of their imagination? No. Luke continues on, verse 38. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. See, Jesus didn't rise as a spirit. He's not a vision of their imagination. He's not just risen in their hearts. He is physically and bodily risen. He has a body. He has muscles. He has tendons. He has bones. He has organs. He has skin. Jesus tells his disciples to touch him, to verify that it's real. I wonder if you've ever had a dream that just seems so vividly real but you wake up in the thick of it, in the midst of it, and you're not sure whether you're still dreaming or not. I feel that sometimes I physically have to get out of bed and feel my feet on the ground to make sure that the dream was over. <laughs> and while well, Jesus does the same, touch me, see, I'm risen, I'm real. And yes, there are differences between his pre-resurrection body and post-resurrection body. He has the ability to transport to other places. Uh, perhaps he still had the scars and wounds, but they had no impact on him. But he rose in a body all the same. So then, why is this important? Well, two main things. Firstly, it gives us assurance you can't prove that Jesus rose as a spirit because there would be no evidence. You can't prove that Jesus rose in the hearts of the disciples, as some people claim, because, again, no evidence. But we can have the confidence and the assurance that Jesus rose again because of physical, tangible evidence. There are over 500 witnesses to him. There were people even willing to face death before denying the fact that Jesus had risen. And you know, people don't die for a lie. People don't die for a warm feeling in their heart. People die for the truth. If you were to create a time machine and go back to this very day 2,000 years ago, let me know. But if you go, you would be able to see the resurrected Jesus. Touch him. Smell him. Eat with him. Even secular historians to this day have to admit that there is a resurrection-shaped dent in human history. Uh, even in the first century, people began to claim that Jesus didn't really rise and that Jesus really wasn't the Son of God. Uh, if you remember, but way back to when we looked at the book of 1 John last year, John is addressing this. John writes to the church to reassure them that Jesus really did rise, that Jesus really is the risen Son, and that as the first generation of apostles die out, that the church should still hold on to the promises and the news of the resurrection. He begins his letter with this. Uh, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life. 
John heard, looked, even touched the risen Jesus. So I have the assurance that Jesus really is risen. It's a reality. Jesus is Lord even over death. If Jesus didn't raise, well, then our faith is futile, useless. But praise God, this isn't the case. So Christ's bodily resurrection is important because, A, it gives us assurance. And Christ's bodily resurrection is important because, B, it shows us what type of resurrection we will have. On Easter Day, we, we touched on this a little bit, we saw that the resurrection is a kind of first fruit of all that is to come. We can know what the rest of the harvest is going to look like by the first fruit. And if Jesus rose with a physical body, then we too will be raised with a physical body if we put our trust in him. See, when people think about heaven or think about eternal life, it can be easy to buy into the myth that we'll be disembodied uh, spirits floating around on clouds, eating copious amounts of carbohydrates and gluten without it impacting us, with angels and, and loots. But that notion is just a myth. We'll be raised with a physical body, just like Jesus' body, perfect, renewed, made whole, healed and eternal in a life where there'll be no more tears and no more sickness, no more aches and pains, no more many trips to the specialists, an eternity with the physically resurrected Jesus. The disciples still didn't really know what to make of this. They thought it was too good to be true. So to prove that Jesus was really real, he asked for the leftovers and took a bite. Spirits don't eat. Ghosts don't eat. Only physical people eat. Jesus is truly risen, an audacious claim. But it's no conspiracy. It's a reality. And it all happened as part of God's plan for salvation. Look with me at Luke 24, verse 44. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Uh, we saw this last week on the road to Emmaus, where Jesus gave these two disciples the first sermon in biblical theology, in seeing how the whole scripture finds its root and fulfillment in Jesus. Uh, we're not going to dwell on this too much, but listen to last week's sermon to catch up if you haven't yet already. But quickly, this is what Jesus has been about in his entire ministry. In his first sermon recorded in Luke 4, uh, Jesus opens up a scroll of the prophet Isaiah and reads this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And then he followed up by saying to them that today... Scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament promises. He brings the Lord's favour. He brings the good news. In Luke alone, Jesus refers to himself 25 times as the Son of Man, as the one prophesied about. He's come to reign and to rule. If you remember, this is why Luke is writing this gospel account. This is why uh, Luke wrote Acts. His purpose statement of Luke Acts is to give his readers the certainty, the assurance that they are on solid ground, that Jesus is the Messiah. Under Roman rule, no new religions were allowed to be introduced. 
in Greek thought and philosophy. Anything that was new was seen as suspicious. New religions or new thoughts were seen as having no weight. But Luke gives us the assurance here, Jesus gives us the assurance here, that it's not a new religion, but he's a fulfillment of the promises for the whole world since the creation of the world. So Luke 24, 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer on the third day and rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The central truth to all of these promises, the way to access this hope and this salvation that we can have, is that if anybody returns to the Lord, if anyone repents, then their sins will be completely forgiven and physical restoration and resurrection appear. What God offers us is completely remarkable. That if anyone turns away from him and rejects him, which we all do, if anybody turns away from his authority and rule and claims to be king of their own lives, then their punishment for sin is completely justified. But all anyone has to do to avoid that punishment and to have that eternal life that we've been seeing over the past three weeks is to repent. A life 180 to turn away from living for sin and turn towards God. And if anybody repents and says sorry for living the way that they have, then their sin is completely and utterly forgiven. It's not about doing it through good works or deeds. We don't need to get onto God's good side or schmooze up to him through repentance. And that's what we are to proclaim. That's what we're on about here at St. John's. The supremacy of Jesus and repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We're on about Jesus. We don't come here to just be moralistic good people. We don't come to Sundays to be told what to do. We aren't only about helping the poor and the needy. We aren't on about doing religious things. We aren't on about being a social club. We aren't even on about being Anglican. Don't tell the bishop I said that. (laughs) But we come here on Sundays to worship someone and rejoice in someone, delight in someone, to be refreshed in his goodness and love. We come here to rejoice in Jesus. And we go out into the world to proclaim Jesus. And we are to be his witnesses. If you remember way back to the first Sunday of this year, way back in the book of Acts, we saw that being a witness is really simple. If you get called up to be a witness in court, you don't lie or make stuff up. That's called perjury. You don't use fancy language. That just muddies the water. You just tell the people what you know and be prepared to give an answer as to why you know and how you know. What makes a claim legitimate and true? Witnesses. What can help the people of the world join the dots in the legitimacy and truthfulness of Jesus? Witnesses. And what is it that you and I are called to be? Witnesses. Tell people what we know. Show off what we know by the way that we live our lives. And if we've seen already this year, we don't do this alone, we can't do this alone, but we can only do this by the enabling of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus promises in verse 49, which says, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. 
uh, Jesus spent about 40 days on earth until uh, he ascended, physically ascended into heaven in his physical body, which means that right now, sat at God's right hand, at the Father's right hand, is Jesus, physically sitting, victorious over sin and death hearing our prayers, interceding to the Father for us until he comes again in power to judge and redeem. At this Easter, we began with the question of, is this all there is? Is this all there is? Is there more to life than this? In a world full of darkness and despair, as we've seen so clearly just in the past 24 hours. Is there more to this? The Easter message is that, yes. Brilliantly, yes, there is more to life than this. The difference that Easter makes is that it shows that God, who is the creator of all things, who is powerful and holy, loves the people he created so much that he is willing to suffer the penalty for the sin that we did. Unjust suffering, the innocent suffering. He knows what it's like. But he is so powerful that not even death could hold him down. Which means there is more to life. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is King, and in all authority, right now. And we'll spend that eternity in our resurrected bodies, which is completely assured. This means that instead of living for the next paycheck or living for the next holiday, We get to live for a bigger purpose, with a bigger hope. This means that we aren't living this life alone, but that God has put himself in us by his spirit, reassuring us of his presence. This also means that we aren't living this life alone, but get brought into God's forever family together, the church. Brothers and sisters from every background, paycheck, nation, language, all on mission together, laughing in the joys together, crying in the sorrows together, drawing closer to Jesus together. And friends, I have one simple question to finish off with. Do you want this? If you are here today or joining online, do you want this hope? Well, it's an offer for you today. Simply turn to Jesus, repent and turn away from your sin. And forgiveness will be completely assured. This promise of Easter is completely assured. So don't miss out. But come and live this new life that Jesus brings. Let's give thanks. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that this life isn't all that there is. We thank you that you haven't left us as orphans, that you haven't left us alone squandering and squalling in our own sin, but that you have gloriously redeemed us, you have gloriously brought our life out of the pit and set us on the firm rock giving us the amazing hope of the resurrection of Jesus, which reassures us of our eternal resurrection. So, Heavenly Father, help us to constantly lift up our eyes to see the beauty and the glory of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as we sing.
In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father praise the son praise the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Our God is a God of glory. Our God is a God of majesty. Our God is King of kings. But, as we've heard, we have failed to live according to his perfect standards. In Isaiah 1.18, God gives us this wonderful promise. To those who turn to him, he says, Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. So let's come before our great God now, confessing our sins. Together, Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love but we have broken your holy laws 
and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to these words from Ephesians 2. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Rachel will now continue to lead us in prayer. Thanks. This morning, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, the response will be, hear our prayer. Let's pray together. Sovereign Lord and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your steadfast love and grace to us, shown in so many ways, but especially in Jesus and in his death and resurrection. We are so grateful for your non-stop commitment to work in all things for our good and for your glory. You are the God of all grace, and we thank you that we can bring all of our prayers to you, big and small. Lord, we thank you for the chance to meet together as your people today. We pray that we will all grow in our knowledge and love of Christ and deepen our appreciation for what he has done for us. Help us to genuinely love and care for one another and encourage each other to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. May we be people who boldly share about all he's done for us and be witnesses in the world to him so that all we say and do reflects his love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Father, we know that our world is full of hurting people and nations torn apart by war, violence, unrest, poverty, and suffering. Please protect, comfort, and heal all the children, women, and men who face unspeakable loss and profound emotional and physical challenges as a result of these things. Please bring peace and healing to these regions. We long for the day when there will be no more violence, suffering, or death. Until that day, please may you be at work in this world, bringing about your peace, mercy, and hope to all those who are suffering worldwide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for our country and especially lift up all those affected by the tragic events in Sydney yesterday. We grieve the loss of life through the acts of violence that occurred at Bondi. Please comfort all those who grieve or have been impacted by these events. We thank you for the police, ambulance and emergency medicine personnel who were first responders. We pray now for the recovery of those who have been injured and those who continue to be distressed by these traumatic circumstances. Father, we are confused and distressed by these violent and senseless acts, but we cast our anxieties on you, knowing that you care for us. Please turn our hearts to your son that we may find our rest in him and hasten the day when peace and justice reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our mission partners, Nathan and Diane Lovell, with Shiri and Isaac, serving with CMS at George Whitfield College in Cape Town. We praise you that they've had a great first term and that the new, stu new students have been settling in. 
We pray that you'll continue to be with Diane, who is involved as a consultant for the various translation projects across Africa. And we lift up Nathan too, as he prepares to teach his post-grad course, Faith and Power. Please use this course to help the students be better equipped to think more biblically about justice, power, and leadership. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray now for our local church family here at St. John's and give you great thanks that we are able to meet together as your people this morning to praise you. We thank you too for the Alpha course that is starting tomorrow and commit it into your hands. Thank you for those who will be coming along and we pray that you'll be with them as they meet together and have the chance to ask questions and talk about Jesus, faith, life and the Bible. Lord, please use this course to bring people to repentance and faith in your Son. God of all compassion and comfort, we lift up to you those members of our church family who are in need. We think of Marilyn and Warwick, Barris, Barry and Elaine, Elizabeth and Emma, Sylvia, Penny, Tony and Faye, Isabel, Cassie and Peter, Anita and Sue, Gwen, Miriam and Graham, Hugh and Brenda's grandson Isaac, Victor and Rose's son Larry, Wayne and Jeff, and anyone else known to us who is sick or struggling in any way. Lord, please be with each of these brothers and sisters. Thank you for your love for them. Please comfort them and heal them and help them to always trust in you. We ask all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, for feeding us with your word, and encouraging us in our time of meeting together. Let's say this together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is our great rock and our salvation. So how do we come to him? Well, Augustus Toplady wrote, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to your cross I cling. Stained by sin, to you I cry. Wash me, Saviour, or I die. Please stand as we sing. Rock of ages, cleft for me, hide me now, my refuge be. Let the water and the blood from your wounded side which flow be for sin. guilt and power not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy Lord's demand could my zeal no rest 
could my tears forever flow all for sin could not atone you must save and you alone nothing in my hand I bring simply to Wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyelids close, in death when I saw through realms unknown bow before the judgment throne hide me then my refuge be rock of ages cleft for me May the God of peace equip you with every good thing for doing his will, working in you what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Please join us for morning tea, and then afterwards it would be lovely if you could stay for the prayer meeting as well. Thanks. Mm -hmm.